So the learning objective for today is what you're seeing on the screen. On your next exam, you will see structures like this, and you will be asked to determine the bond angles okay, like that. All right. The objective of today's lesson, the learning objective is to being able to tackle a problem like that. I'll give you a minute to struggle with discussion in your groups. You can talk with each other and then we are, we'll make sure that we can do this by the end of today's lecture. Go ahead. Okay. And here are our responses. You can see that they are less than 50% for most of these. And we don't even know whether these are the correct answers, but we're going to figure them out a little bit later. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to go back to the beginning of my slide deck. And learning assistants, please, can you, can you distribute the, the whiteboards? I should have mentioned this in the beginning of the class. I really need whiteboards today. So what I want you to do is I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you some molecules, molecular formulas of some molecules. I want you to draw the Lewis structures of them and determine the electron domains around the central atom of those molecules. Now, now my suggestion is whenever, I mean, at least for now, okay, when you are asked to draw the Lewis structures, please start from the first step, which is counting the valence electrons. And the second step, drawing the skeleton. Third step, distributing the valence electrons. Okay. And then the fourth step, making sure that all the atoms have an octets, if not delocalizing lone pairs to make uh, extra bonds, like double bonds or triple bonds, okay? So those are the steps. Please stick with them, okay? So anyway, now quickly, CO2 is, is pretty straightforward because we have done this several times. I don't know why this Zoom changed everything, which wasn't, you know, required. So CO2. So it should look something like this, carbon, and that was loud. All right, so this should be the CO2 Lewis structure, which we have done previously. And CH2O should look something like this. All right. Please let me know if I make a mistake. I'm happy to know that. And SO2 has resonance structures. If you draw one Lewis structure, it should look something like this, okay? And then the other one will have the double bond on the uh, right-hand side. That's the only difference. And okay? now you see oh, we have octets on all the atoms. And CCl2F2, carbon is a central atom. What we have is this. So we have fluorine uh, and then fluorine. And then we have fluorine. By the way, this wedge is denoting a single bond that is coming out of the plane, okay? Because CCl2F2 is a 3D molecule, okay? It's showing that it is coming out, but I will talk about why it is the case a little bit later, but that is what that uh, no, uh, notation means. And then the dashed line means it's going away from you into the plane, Okay, this is how we draw 3D structures in a 2D plane, but we will play with that, but you are not expected to be able to write something like that, draw something like that in an exam. All right, NH3 should look something like this. So a normal line means a bond on the plane, okay? A wish means a bond coming at you from the plane. A dashed line like this means the bond going away into the plane and then Complete the Lewis structure. I need to have the lone pairs. Don't forget about them. If I forget them, you know, somebody might, you know, just give me a slap on the wrist. But for you, you will lose some points. So don't forget to put the lone pairs. All right, that's that. And this three is done. And the last one is two. Uh, looks something like that. Hydrogen. And then we have two lone pairs so that oxygen can have an octet as well. All right, so here are the Lewis structures. Do we have any questions, concerns, comments about these? Anything? Yes, call, right? Yes, call. Sulfur can do anything. Yeah, I mean, sulfur can make more than two bonds. Okay, so if you are talking about the common bonding pattern, all right, that is, so I know sulfur is in the sixth group meaning it has six valence electrons, meaning two, va two vacancies, meaning commonly, usually, it forms two bonds, just like oxygen, okay? 
but it can form more than more than two bonds. Just oxygen can form more than two bonds sometimes. Okay, so here's what you need to maybe even write a note about. Okay, so when it comes to Lewis structures, the holy grail is the octet of electrons around the atoms. Okay, that's the goal to have octet or eight electrons around each atom in the in, in the structure. Okay. Sometimes to do that, we need to violate the common bonding pattern. Okay. But if you don't have to, we don't do it. But if we have to violate it, it's sometimes it's okay to violate it. Okay. I have a bad example, which I'm not going to talk about now, which involves top signs uh, and a sick dog. All right. Anyway, uh, do we have any questions, concerns, comments at the moment? Anything? Okay. All right, now the the question is actually asking for the electron domains. Okay, and then we know, let me have a different color now. So for carbon dioxide, we have two electron domains around the central atom because a double bond is an electron domain. We have two of them. And then for CH2, we have one, two, three electron domains. For SO2, we have one, two, three electron domains. For CF2Cl2, we have one, two, three, four electron domains. For NS3, we have one, two, three, four electron domains. For H2O, we have one, two, three, four electron domains. Okay, so these are the electron domains. Also, even though I drew the lone pair like this, lone pairs usually take up more space. So I would rather draw a larger balloon for the lone pairs because they usually take up more space. Anyway, so those are the electron domains. Therefore, the correct answer is, if I can figure out this new thing, is this. Okay. Any questions, concerns, comments? All right. Now I, I I'm gonna move forward, but before that, I mean I'm gonna I wanna I mean somebody asked me a question about why why can't we draw another another a double bond between this sulfur and oxygen over here? I mean you can, but if you do that, you will have more than eight electrons around sulfur. You are violating the octet rule. Okay. You do not want to violate rules unless you have a real reason. In this case, you don't want to violate the rule because you only have eight electrons around all the atoms. Therefore, we are not going to be a rebel without a cause. Okay. So, Louis is back. Hi, Louis. Yeah. So, that's why we are not going to ma make a double bond there. Okay. Because, I mean, we don't have to do it. We don't want to violate a doctor's rule for no reason. All right. So, don't be a rebel without a cause. All right. Do we have any other questions, concerns, comments at the moment? Anything? All right. So if that is the case, I'm going to, let me see, clear my doodling. And let's do something like this. Okay. Oh, I had to talk a lot a little bit now. All right. So here are the same structures. I would have used this easily. That's okay. Now... You have to listen to me, unfortunately, for the next five minutes. All right, because I'm going to try to uh, organize your notes for next, I mean, next exam. All right, here's how it goes. Oops. Oh, yeah, here's uh, what we did in class about SO2 the other day. Okay, so I want, so I'm going to write this on my notes, meaning, I expect you to write the same thing in your notes as well, okay? So, now, this is about the electron domains around uh, the central atom deciding the shape of the molecule. I'm shouting, all right? So, I'm, in the first column, I want you to have the, oh my goodness, number of electron domains. Okay, and then in the second column, I want you to have lone pairs or lone electron domains. It's called lone pairs. Okay, 
And then I want you to have the electron domain geometry. Electron domain geometry. I mean, okay, EDG in short. And then I want you to have molecular geometry, MG in short. And then I want you to have in the last column, the bond angle. Okay. All right. So let's start. Let's think about something like carbon dioxide. We had two electron domains around the central atom, okay? Zero lone pairs around the central atom, okay? So think of electron domains as balloons. If you hold two balloons in your hand, in one hand, how would they look like? How would they arrange in the space? To be far apart from each other, they will arrange, say that they are fully blown balloons, okay? You're holding in one hand, how would they how would they look like what will be the shape yeah that's called a linear shape meaning the uh, the each balloon will be like you know 180 degrees apart oh my god is that's that's the bone angle as well but let's come to that all right so that geometry is called a linear geometry okay and because they are I mean, all my electron domains are bonding electron domains my molecular geometry is also linear. And what about the bond angle? The bond angle would be 180 degrees. Okay. Now, quickly, let me go back to the screen. Okay. I want to show you something. And this is a simulator that is available to you on Top Hat, I believe. If it is not, let me know. I'll post uh, something on D2L as well. Okay. So here's carbon dioxide, all right? Here's how it looks. It looks like a line or a stick, right? And because, I mean, we have two electron domains, okay? Because two double bonds means two electron domains. Therefore, the electron domain geometry is linear. So is the, the molecular geometry. And the bond angle, if you make it show the bond angles, is 180. All right. Now, let's do another one and then I'll take any questions if you have any questions, okay? Let's say that we had three electron domains. We have seen some of them, all right? I'm gonna keep two lines between them. Three electron domains and zero lone pairs. Okay, so again, electron domains are like balloons. If you hold three balloons, fully blown balloons in your hand, okay, trying to decorate something for Thanksgiving or something like that, okay, how would they look like? What is the shape it's going to generate? A triangle. And also that triangle will be on a plane, right? It's not like, okay. So it's going to, it's, co it's called a, a trigonal planar geometry. Okay. Because the three balloons is going to make a triangular shape. And it is on a plane as well. Therefore, that is called trigonal, trigonal planar. Okay. And because there are no lone pairs, all my electron domains are bonding electron domains, my molecular geometry is also, I'm going to use two lines, trigonal planar. Okay. Now, let me show you what I mean over here. Okay. Let's say that we have something like this. No, let's do this. Here's what we have. Let me get it off the sort of bond angle thing. Okay. So if you have three electron domains, let's say that we have, I mean, you know, hypothetical molecule over here, and they're going to arrange something like this, a triangle shape. And also it is planar. Okay. It's, it, it is in a plane. The is called a trigonal planar geometry. Now, if you have a shape like this, what would be the bond angle? Anybody? It's 120, 360 divided by three angles. Okay. It should be 120, right? The bond angle would be 120. So let's write that as well. It should be 120 degrees. All right, let's do another one with uh, three electron domains. Sometimes we have three electron domains, but one of them is a lone pair. 
just like in SO2, right? We saw that there are three electron domains. One of those electron domains is a lone pair, okay? So now in this situation, again, the electron domain geometry would be, because we still have three electron domains, three balloons in our hand, therefore the electron domain geometry would be, any guesses? Come then again? It's going to be trigonal planar, right? Because still three electron domains, right? If we have three balloons, they're going to arrange in a trigonal planar geometry. All right, so let's do that, trigonal planar. But when it comes to the entire molecule, all right, how would it look like? Let me let me let me show you first and then you can answer that. All right. So let's say that we have a situation like this. Here's what we have. Now, if you forget about these electrons, which we cannot see, if you just look at the molecule, what kind of a shape do you see? It's not linear anymore. I heard that answer from somebody. Thank you. It is called a bent geometry. Why? This this thing is bent. It's not a perfect stick anymore, a linear stick anymore. It is bent, okay? And therefore, the molecular geometry is called bent. Let's write that too. Is bent. All right, now the bond angle, okay? The bond angle is primarily, pay attention to this, primarily determined by the electron domain geometry, okay? So if that is the case, what do you think the bond angle would be? Yeah, it's 120 degrees, okay? But to be technically more correct, all right? So it's going to be less than 120, a little bit less than 120 degrees. Why? The lone pair, okay, usually takes up, not usually, it always, okay? It always takes up more space than the bonding electron pairs. As a result of that, the lone pair is going to pinch the angle between the bonds a little bit. As a result of that, the bond angle here would be a little bit less than 120. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, your simulator just not cannot do this because uh, it hasn't learned chemistry. It just do whatever, you know, we ask you to do. Okay. So it just tells 120, but actually this bond angle would be a little bit less than 120. Why? The lone pairs takes up more space. Therefore, is going to pinch this bond angle a little bit. That's the idea there. All right. Do we have any questions, concerns, comments at this moment? Last thing. Or then we're done with this. You don't have to listen to me anymore. I mean, at least for long, you know, extended period of times. So like this. Now we had two electron domains, three electron domains, and the last one would be four electron domains. And let's start with the subcategory, zero lone pairs, right? If you have four electron domains, oh, well, let's have balloons. Get rid of these guys and then have just balloons. Okay. Think about this as balloons. You hold in one hand, all right? Uh oh What kind of a shape does it make? Okay. To make them far apart, apart from each other because these are electron domains, right? Electrons and electrons repel each other. They hate each other, okay? So therefore, they try to be farther apart from each other, okay? When they do that, they are not going to arrange in a square planar geometry. Instead, they are going to arrange in a geometry like this. Does anybody know what we call this geometry? Yes, sir. Thank you. That is called a tetrahedral geometry. Okay, it's just like this, okay? So if my limbs are electron domains, okay, so to be far apart from, if I want to make my limbs far apart from each other, it's going to, it's going to, you know, be in a position like this, like a cheerleader position, right? Yeah? So that is called the tetrahedral geometry. Okay. Now, anyway, so therefore the electron domain or the balloon geometry is tetrahedral. Okay. And now let me replace all... Give me a second. All my uh, electron domains with single bonds. Okay. So if I have no lone pairs, my if my if all my electron domains are bonding electron domains, my molecular geometry will also be tetrahedral. Okay, so let's write that down. 
Okay. Four electron domains, zero lone pairs, meaning all my electron domains are bonding electron domains. That geometry is called tetrahedral. Okay. And also the molecular geometry is tetrahedral as well. Tetrahedral. Because all my electron domains are bonding electron domains. Does anybody know the bond angle? Is it 90 degrees? It's not 90. If it was a square planar geometry, it would be 90. But what would be the uh, bond angle here? Anybody? Thank you. It's 109.5 degrees. Okay. If it is a perfect tetrahedral, geometry is going to be 109.5 degrees. All right. Let's do last two. We are, then we're done. All right. Say that we have four electron domains. One of them is a lone pair, just like in this three. We, we just did. Okay. Because we have four electron domains, the electron domain geometry would be anybody? What would be the electron domain geometry? So we have four electron domains. Therefore, the electron domain geometry would be, thank you, tetrahedral. Tetrahedral. There's no doubt about that because electron domain geometry is determined by the number of electron domains. Okay. Now, one of them is a lone pair. So here's the situation over here. I'm going to remove one of the bonds and introduce a lone pair like this, like alien ship now. Like it's not called alien ship. All right. Does anybody know what we call this molecular geometry, the shape of this molecule? Any idea? Thank you. It's called trigonal pyramidal. It's, it looks like a pyramid. Okay. And also the faces are like, like triangles. Right. Therefore, that is called a trigonal pyramidal geometry. So let's write that too. If this is the case, our geometry is trigonal pyramidal. Okay. Bond angle. Any idea? Thank you. Let's, thank you. That's perfect. Okay. Now, again, the bond angle is primarily determined by the electron domain geometry, which is tetrahedral. Therefore, it has to do with 109.5. But because that lone pair takes up more space, that angle will be a little bit pinched. Therefore, this bond angle will be a little bit less than 109.5. Thank you. This is perfect. All right. Last one. Let's do water. Okay. In water, we had four electron domains, but we, two of them are lone pairs. Okay. And therefore, what about the electron domain geometry of water? Anybody? Thank you. It should be tetrahedral. Tetrahedral. Okay. Now, let's look at it. Here's how, oh no, water looks like. Okay. What can we call this shape? Anybody? What do we, what, what can we call this shape? Yeah, it, it, it's something we have seen before, right? Okay. It would have been a stick if not for these lone pairs. Now, the stick is bent. What can we come up with now as the name for this? Yeah, let's call it bent. Yeah, it is bent. It's not linear. It is bent. All right. So the molecular geometry is called bent. All right. Let's write that over here. All right. So we can have bent molecular geometry uh, starting with three electron domains or four electron domains. The only difference is the bond angle. What do you think the bond angle in this case then? Anybody? What would, what would be the bond angle? Again, one more time. Let me help you. Okay. The bond angle is primarily determined by the electron domain geometry, which is tetrahedral. If it is tetrahedral, perfect tetrahedral, it should be 109.5 degrees. Now, this is not a perfect tetrahedral. Why? We have two lone pairs. The lone pairs pinch the bond angle. The half our bond angle would be what do you think? Thank you. It's less than 109.5. There you go. That's it. This is all the possible uh, geometries you, you can get in Chem 151. This is it. Everything is tabulated on this table. Right? I've seen mini versions or micro versions of this in uh, past one-page exams. I mean, one-page one notes. Yeah? All right. Any questions, concerns, comments about this? Anything? All right, let's have some fun. 
So I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to go to the same molecules you have seen. And then here are our responses. Did, did I just see CISO? Anyway, so yeah, so CO2 is linear. Okay, anyway, this is the correct answers. Okay, now let's see. I, th I think the most troublesome ones are NH3. I have a feeling that you were going for the uh, the molecular geometry instead. Okay, NH3 has three single bonds and then, a one, then one lone pair. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four electron domains. Whenever we have four electron domains, the electron domain geometry is tetrahedral. Okay, there shouldn't be any doubt about that. Okay, and then CH2O is fine. Uh, H2O is the same thing, right? We have the lone pair, two lone pairs, and then two single bonds around the oxygen. We have one, two, three, four electron domains. Whenever we have four electron domains, the electron domain geometry is tetrahedral. All right, what questions, concerns, comments do we have about this? Anything, anything that bugs you at the moment? Yes, thank you, Miss. Yeah. Can I have the, do we have a microphone nearby? Can you shout, Miss? I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. So, so here's the thing. All right. So, we have the question is about the bond angle of tetrahedral geometry. So what we have is four balloons, four electron domains. If so, here are your options. If they arrange in a square geometry, like a square planar geometry, the bond angle would be 90 degrees. Right? But what tetrahedral geometry does this is gonna make the, the electron domains further apart, okay, than a square planar geometry, making the angle between them more than 90 degrees, which is 109.5 degrees. Okay. Now, whenever we have uh, four electron domains, the, 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 the angle would be closer to 109.5 degrees, okay? But if we have like lone pairs, what those lone pairs does is it's gonna pinch the bond angle a little bit. As a result of that, whenever we see lone pairs, the bond angle would be less than 109.5 degrees. Yeah? All right, any other questions, concerns, comments? All right, now just to, you know, have our notes straight, but we'll do the molecular geometries for the same thing. And then we are done with these molecules. Maybe the bond angle after that, then we're done. Here we go. Now I'm asking uh, our responses. Oh, this is, this is much better. We are close to 90% now. All right, and these are the correct answers as well. All right, do we have any questions at the moment? Anything? All right. So this is what you need to do, even in an exam, have the table handy, okay? Now, this is what I was gonna tell you, and then, you know, I decided to wait until you're done with this question to, um, to you know, mention this, okay? The key of determining the molecular geometry is the Lewis structure, okay? So it is really important that you draw the correct Lewis structure and then determine the electron domains around the central atom to determine the correct molecular geometry or the electron domain geometry. Without the Lewis structure, you cannot do it. Okay, so please pay attention to, please pay more attention to the Lewis structure, okay, and then to the, the geometry at this point, okay, because molecular geometry and the electron domain geometry, all you have to do is refer to that table we just created. That's it, okay, but the, key, the most important thing is to get the right amount of electron domains around the central atom uh, to get these questions right. Okay, you know, have that perspective. Okay, do we have any questions, concerns, comments at the moment? Now, I, I got a question about the CSO. I mean, the question was, what the heck is a CSO? So, now I explained that CSO is something that you find in a kindergarten playground. 
Okay, people, you know, the kids used to write them. Okay, there are two people. So that's the CISO. Okay. Now the idea is, you know what? Let's play with this a little bit. Can you on your whiteboards, can you draw the Lewis structure of SF4? S F4 and determine its, I don't know, molecular geometry or something. I love start with the basics. Okay. So if you if you start with the basics, you cannot, you know, go wrong. You know, this is my opinion. Okay. Anyway, so sulfur brings us six valence electrons and fluorines bring us seven electrons, valence electrons each. We have four of them. Four times seven is 28. So altogether we have 34 valence electrons, meaning 17 electron pairs. That's my first step. Okay. Then the skeleton, I should have sulfur in the middle because that has the higher bonding capacity. And then I should have one, two, three fluorines bound to it. Okay. Now that's my skeleton. Then I'm going to distribute my 17 electron pairs starting with the outer atoms. I've already used one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen goes over here on sulfur like that. Okay. Now what we do is what is this geometry? Okay. So if you want to know, you can go to the simulator which I believe you already have, right? Which is over here. And then what we have is, I'll go to the model. I have four bonds and then one lone pair. Here's how it looks. It's what? It looks like a seesaw, okay? The molecular geometry is called seesaw. Yeah, so it's a real thing, okay? Electron domain is taken up by, but you don't have to worry about that, but you know, in case you wonder what that is, okay? That's the molecular geometry as well that you happen to find in kindergarten playgrounds. All right. Any questions? No, no don't ask me questions about that. All right. So as you already know, our homeworks are due on Sundays at 11.59 p.m. Okay. The homework for this module Unit 2, Module 3B is due this Sunday uh, at 11.59 p.m. So you should be able to complete them right now because we are done with Unit 2, Module 3. All right, I'm going to close this question in 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And here are our responses. Yeah, okay. And this is the correct answers as well, which is great. All right, I think I think we are doing fine here, okay? So what I want to do is I want to open the question I gave you at the beginning of the class. Okay? I gave you a line structure and then ask you to determine the uh, bond angles around atoms 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, again, remember, and these are the correct answers. All right. Okay, now anyway... um. Let's do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this on the screen. All right, I want you to pay attention now, okay? So at least you want to convert these four atoms into Lewis structures, okay? So here we have a band, therefore it should be a carbon. We only have two bonds, therefore there should be two other carbon hydrogen bonds. Okay. We have four electron domains around this carbon, they are for electron domain geometry is tetrahedral. And also, all my electron domains are bonding electron dom uh, domains. They are for the molecular geometry is also tetrahedral. If it is tetrahedral, oh, the bond good. angle would be 109.5 degrees. And atom two, which is a nitrogen, we need we have three bonds that are nitrogen, meaning six electrons. We need to introduce a lone pair to make it have an octet of electrons, meaning we have uh 
four electron domains around the nitrogen atom. Four electron domains means we have um, we have a tetrahedral electron domain geometry. Therefore, the bond angle has to do with 109.5 degrees. But one of them is a lone pair, meaning this bond angle will be pinched by the lone pair because it takes up more space. Therefore, angle two over here should be less than 109.5. Right. By the way, in some, if somebody wonders about the molecular geometry, this is going to be trigonal pyramidal. Right, that's that. And at term three, we have a carbon. We have three bonds already. Therefore, we need one more carbon hydrogen bond. Okay, we have one, two, three electron domains. Therefore, the electron domain geometry would be trigonal planar. If it is trigonal planar, bond angle has to do with one twenty degrees. Okay. And then because all my bonding electron, um, all my electron domains are bonding electron domains, my molecular geometry is also trigonal planar. The bond angle would be 120 degrees. Last one is a carbon over here. We have three bonds. So we're going to add one carbon hydrogen bond, four electron domains, meaning electron domain geometry is tetrahedral. The angle has to do with 109.5 then. And the molecular geometry is also tetrahedral because all my electron domains are uh, bonding electron domains. Therefore, this angle here would be 109.5. Done. This is the way. All right. This Friday, I will include a line structure. Okay. Just like the previous question and ask you to determine the bond angles and then maybe the molecular geometries and stuff like that. I'm already telling you the questions I'm gonna include in the quiz. I think we have done, I posted a video on SO3 and SO32 minus as well, comparing them. Okay, so I'm gonna, maybe I can do CH3 minus just for fun. I'll do that, okay. I'm gonna close this question in uh, I think we hit more. Okay. In five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, perfect. All right. And then here are our responses, which is great. Um, numbers are not that great, but it can be better. Okay, anyway. So SO3, we have three electron domains around the sulfur atom. Okay. Three electron domains means electron domain geometry is trigonal planar. And all my electron domains are bonding electron domains. Therefore, the molecular geometry is also trigonal planar. Now, I see, okay, we, very low number for that, for SO3. Can, what questions, what confusion did you have there? Anything that I can help with? Okay, SO3 shows resonance, all right? So the idea is if you, if you stick to the basics, okay, we are going to get something like this. This is my skeleton, and then our... Ox oxygens will have the octet for sure, like that, right? And now, but the sulfur does not have an octet. Therefore, we have three options. We can delocalize the lone pairs from the top one between sulfur and oxygen. This is the first option. Or from this one, this is our second option. Or from this one, which is the third option. Meaning, we can draw three resonance structures, three different Lewis structures, okay? Anyway, either way, we have three electron domains around sulfur, meaning electron domain geometry is trigonal planar. And then a molecular geometry is also trigonal planar because all my electron domains are bonding electron domains. Okay, I'll come back to that because people get anxious now because it's almost uh, 12, 15. All right, anyway, for CH3 minus, carbon gives us four electrons, three hydrogens gives us three, minus one charge gives us one more electron, meaning we have eight electrons in this structure, okay? So we have carbon, we have one, two, uh, three hydrogens bound to it. Okay, we have eight electrons, meaning four electron pairs. So I'm going to distribute my electron pairs starting with the uh, outer atoms, not outer atoms because hydrogens already have the, uh, the two electrons in them. So it should be one, two, three bonding electron pairs. And then the fourth one should go on carbon like that. Right. So the electron domain geometry would be tetrahedral Y. We have four electron domains around the carbon atom. Okay. One, two, three, and four. And then the um, the molecular geometry is trigonal pyramidal because um, when you have a lone pair, so the less of the molecule looks like a pyramid, therefore trigonal pyramidal molecular geometry. All right, I think... I think I'm going to stop right here. But when we come back on Thursday, 
I'm going to ask you to do this. Okay, maybe somebody wants to do this at home, that will be fine. 